Hello, my name is Dr. Fred Foley, and I'm the Director of Neuropsychology and Psychosocial Research at Holy Name Medical Center's Multiple Sclerosis Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, and a Professor Emeritus in Psychology at Yeshiva University in the Bronx, New York. I'm here to speak with you today about improving quality of life in multiple sclerosis, uh, primarily from a psychological perspective. And people frequently ask me, well, what is quality of life and how do you measure it? So to begin, I think we should start with a definition of quality of life. And it really is a multi-dimensional construct, you know, containing um, perceptions. And quality of life is really a perception. It's the perception of how you're doing physically. It's the perception of how much your physical problems interfere in your role functioning. That is the roles that we assume as adults, getting educated, working, raising a family, etc. It also um, typically measures your vitality or energy level, your perception of that, as well as if you're in chronic pain, your estimate of how much pain you're in. And finally, quality of life measures also look at how you're doing emotionally. How is your emotional health and how does your emotional health interfere or not in your expected role functioning? So these are the typical dimensions, you know, associated with it. And in multiple sclerosis, a quality of life has been found to be affected by many factors. About 80% of persons with MS experience fatigue. And this isn't the kind of fatigue that you or I may feel at the end of a long, hard day. This is an illness fatigue, you know, more akin to the kind of fatigue you would feel if you had the flu or another viral infection. So as you might imagine, this can be quite disabling and it frequently is an MS. There have been some recent studies that have attempted different types of interventions to see if MS-related fatigue could be improved. Unfortunately, medicines that have been tried haven't been that effective. There's a lot of mixed evidence for trying stimulants and other types of uh, medications to alleviate fatigue. However, a large meta-analysis has found that exercise helps with decreasing fatigue and improving estimates of quality of life. Also, there's a specific type of psychotherapy called cognitive behavior therapy, which is relatively short term and it's highly structured. And addressing fatigue using cognitive behavior therapy has also been found to be effective. There are other things that uh, can significantly impact quality of life in MS. About 50% of persons with MS will experience a clinical depression during the course of their lives. And this is higher than in the general population. Of course, people in general population can get depressed, but it happens more frequently in persons with MS. And uh, studies of depression uh, kind of view it as something that is a symptom of the illness. It's just a, one more symptom that people with MS can develop. So uh, that's the bad news, that depression occurs frequently in MS. The good news is that uh, clinical depression can be treated successfully in MS. Um, when people are depressed, they lose interest in the things they're usually interested in. They um, feel sad most of the time. They feel senses of helplessness and hopelessness. And their quality of life ratings really plummet during a depression. So uh, treatments that have been found to be effective uh, include that highly structured psychotherapy I mentioned uh, that was applied to fatigue, cognitive behavior psychotherapy. And that works by getting people to change their thinking, getting people to change that, that feeling of helplessness and hopelessness and engaging them in something called behavioral activation, uh, getting them to move more, getting them to uh, participate in activities of daily living and in life more, even if they don't feel like doing it, kind of getting them to try to force themselves to engage. Because if they can do that, that has been found to decrease clinical depression scores. Also, a class of uh, medicines called SSRIs have been found to be effective in treating depression in MS. Another um, 
problem that people with MS can develop is anxiety. The majority of persons with MS experience a significant clinical anxiety at times. And anxiety is an important symptom to address because uh, anxiety can not only make you uncomfortable and decrease your quality of life ratings, but it can also interfere in your thinking and your cognition. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that in a minute. Because of its impact in quality of life and uh, on your cognition, it's important to uh, assess or screen for uh, clinical depression and clinical anxiety. And there are very brief screeners that can be used that have been validated and are in the public domain for uh, depression, uh, especially, and also anxiety. Having your patients fill them out while they're waiting will give you important information about their state of mind and uh, their related quality of life. As with depression, anxiety has also been successfully treated in persons with MS with medicines and with cognitive behavior psychotherapy. There are other aspects of MS and living with MS that can impact quality of life. Uh, there's a lot of adjustments that frequently had to be made. For example, if you can't work anymore or can't fulfill some of those roles in life that you expect yourself to fulfill, that can alter your mood and that could you know, decrease uh, your quality of life. Brief counseling can sometimes help with uh, getting people to adjust to the changes and the living with uncertainty that comes with MS. Cognition can also be impacted in MS, specifically speed of processing. That is how quickly you can process information gets slowed down in MS. That's the most common cognitive problem in MS. Cognitive problems happen in uh, probably between 50 and 60% of persons with MS at some time during the course of their illness. Now, cognitive problems in MS are not like cognitive problems in Alzheimer's disease. They don't tend to be as severe. They tend to be more focal in nature, um, verbal and visual memory processing speed, and executive function, which includes your attention, concentration, and rapid problem solving, seems to be potentially impaired in persons with MS. And I mentioned anxiety before. Uh, one of my uh, previous PhD students published a study demonstrating that anxiety interacts with cognitive changes. It's kind of like pouring gasoline on a fire. So we have people come in all the time who think they have cognitive impairments. And after we do a neuropsychological test battery on them, we find out that frequently they're just very anxious or depressed. And if we treat the anxiety or depression, then they start thinking more clearly and their cognition improves. So it's important to understand that these psychological conditions can impact other aspects of thinking. And if you treat them and treat them successfully, uh, you will see improvements in person's perception of their quality of life. Um, Another problem that occurs in MS that is quite common is sexual dysfunction. Sexual dysfunction happens to the majority of persons with MS. A large study found that this condition, when present, negatively impacts people's uh, perceptions regarding the mental health aspects of their quality of life. People are frequently diagnosed in their 20s and early 30s with MS. And this is a time in the life cycle when uh, sexual function is important to people and is ranked highly in people's estimates of their quality of life. So it's important to kind of do a brief assessment for this when your patient comes into the clinic you know, and just ask the simple question, how is your sex life doing? And if you do that, you'll probably be surprised to find many of your patients will let you know that it's there. Fortunately, there's the treatments that are available. Just educating patients and providing them with uh, materials and brochures have been found to be helpful. And also that brief counseling that incorporates education about sexual function and um, important information about local resources to get it treated has been found to be effective in treating the symptom and by proxy, people's estimates of their quality of life. Thank you very much for your time today.